सो दिस इज लेक्चर नाइन ऑफ दिस कोर्स ऑन एनालॉग मॉस सर्किट डिजाइन एंड वी विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम व्हाट वी हैव कंसीडर्ड इन द लास्ट क्लास व्हेन वी हैव लेफ्ट इन द लास्ट क्लास वी टॉक्ड अबाउट द डिजाइन ऑफ एन मॉस एम्पलीफायर इन्वॉल्विंग अ सिंपल रेजिस्टेंस एंड देन अल्टीमेटली वी हैव शोन दैट दिस रेजिस्टेंस कुड हैव बीन रिप्लेस्ड बाय मींस ऑफ अ करंट सोर्स एन आइडियल करंट सोर्स इन व्हिच केस वी कैन इंक्रीज द गेन of that particular amplifier so the idea was something like that uh, we have started with uh, with a mos device like this n mos whose source was grounded like this some bias voltage is applied between the gate and the source so that the device is turned on and we apply the input between these two terminal like this so let this voltage be v1 and there is another voltage input signal vn like this and instead of placing a resistance a discrete resistor between the drain terminal and the supply what we have done is we have started with an ideal current source connected like this so this was the supply vdd and we consider okay there is some id not a constant dc current source is placed between these two terminal and we are expected to obtain the output from this particular terminal which is the drain terminal so initially i have started with considering a resistance a discrete resistance connected between these two terminal supply and the drain and then ultimately what we have done is we have replaced this resistance by means of a constant current source now in this particular class uh, we will try to realize how to implement that particular current source because since we are talking about an integrated circuit so we don't have the possibility to represent this current source as a discrete element so even if we have some resistor even if we have some current source even if we have some capacitor in a discrete in, in a con in a integrated circuit then obviously we have to replace all these things by means of the mos device now already you know that uh, if i have an n mos device like this with three terminals like gate drain and source then uh, if the device is properly biased so that the device is operated in the saturation region then under this condition the current that is flowing through the device Uh, that can be written like id is equal to half mu and c ox w over l into vgs minus vth whole square times 1 plus lambda vds if you would like to incorporate the channel length modulation so that is the concept and accordingly uh, we have found that uh, how does this uh, particular current id vary with vds so in the saturation region it's not exactly constant but uh, it is something like that so had this been exactly constant then this will be the variation of id with respect to vds and because of this 1 plus lambda vds term the id will increase with vds but that increment is not that much and ultimately it is governed by the value of lambda that dotted line signifies lambda is equal to 0 and this corresponding slope represents lambda is equal to is not equal to 0 so therefore if we uh, bias uh, this mos device properly so that the gate source voltage is greater than the threshold voltage and the device is turned on so let me put a bias voltage between these two terminal let this voltage be v1 with this some in on much more positive with respect to this terminal and now if you observe 
the MOS as a two terminal device. Then what we find is between these two terminals, even if we change the voltage, the current remains almost constant. I say that I'm almost because there is a certain fluctuation with respect to the value of lambda. So therefore, if I would like to visualize the entire thing, uh, let me just change the color and let me put a line like this. Now within this, now if you would like to visualize the MOS as a two terminal device, then what you find is between these two terminal, if I consider the voltage to be say VDS and if the corresponding current is equal to IDS or ID, then the MOS device will operate like a current source between these two terminal. So equivalently, what I've shown over here, so equivalently that can be represented by means of a current source, not ideal because it's not constant. The value of the current source changes with respect to VDS if we would like to incorporate the ch uh, channel and modulation. However, so let me just, yeah, so this is the VDD and you have the current ID. So it looks something like that. So from a particular supply line VDD, the current is flowing in this way to an arbitrary node. So that node can be anything. So current is directed from a fixed supply line to an arbitrary node over here. Similarly, if you would like to visualize the PMOS device as a current source, then how does it look like? For a PMOS device, as you know, what we can do is, so this is my source terminal. So let me identify the source terminal, the top. It looks something like that. And you have a gate over here. And this one is the drain. And gate source is properly biased. And this time, the source terminal is much more positive with respect to the gate terminal. So this one is the source terminal. This one is the drain and source is much more positive with respect to the gate terminal, let it be V1. Now equivalently, what I can show is, this is nothing but, uh, let me just show the equivalent representation. So as you know, for a PMOS device, the current will flow from the source to drain. So this time, It looks something like that. So this one is the source terminal. This one is the drain terminal. And for NMOS device, the current will flow from the drain terminal to the source terminal. And for PMOS device, the current will flow from the source terminal to the drain terminal. So whenever I'm saying a current, that means I'd like to mention the positive current, the positive current which will flow through the device. So now uh, if I come back once again to the main circuit which involves a MOS device as well as a current source as the load resistance, then what I can do is I can simply replace the current source by means of an appropriate MOS device. So let me just show you. First of all, this is my 
amplifying device the nmos that we are considering over here source is grounded just like this and between these two we have a bias voltage let it be v1 so that the gate source terminal of this mos is properly biased and in series you have a time varying signal let it be v in then this is the drain terminal of the mos so let me call this mos to be m1 because ultimately we have to incorporate another mos now here is the supply line vdd so this is the supply line vdd now if you uh, consider another mos device connected over here in this way so that the gate source terminal is properly biased so let me have another bias voltage over here which looks something like that let me call this bias voltage to be v2 with this side positive this side negative just it is that part yeah so this is my drain supply vdd at this particular point and i would like to take the output from this terminal v out and let me call this mos as the second mos which is acting as a load m2 so now in order to realize the amplifier i am taking the help of two mos device one is m1 that is basically acting like an amplifying device and the second mos m2 which is acting like a load now under this condition what we have is we have to find out the corresponding resistance being offered by this device second device m2 so now to do that what i can ultimately perform is a small signal analysis so let me just observe the second mos m2 in isolation so this is the second mos source is connected to supply line vdd and we have a battery connected between gate and source so that this is properly biased and you have to ensure that the mod vgs of the second mos should be greater than the mod vth of this pmos so that the device is on and accordingly you have to also ensure that the device m2 must be in saturation and accordingly you have to select the value of v2 this side plus this side minus because for the pmos as you know the source is at a higher potential as compared to the gate terminal and this is the drain terminal and this one is a source terminal for the pmos and this one is a gate terminal now i have taken this uh, particular device this particular mos or i have uh, separated this particular thing from the circuit itself and i would like to visualize the performance of this particular device that is m2 so now to do that i need to draw the small signal model of this mos m2 so what we have gate and source and drain so these are the three terminals between gate and source this voltage let it be say v1 so this is the source terminal and this time obviously as you know the gate is at a lower potential as with respect to the source what i can do is i can also change the polarity over here or i can also change the uh, polarity of the current source so concerning v1 like this equivalently i can show 
that gm times v1 will flow in this direction okay and uh, you have another resistance r not so that the channel length modulation is taken into our consideration so this is my ultimate drain end this one is the source end and this one is the gate end okay then what we have between gate to source we have a battery connected between gate to source now since we are drawing the small signal model so obviously in the small signal equivalent circuit this gate and source they are at the same potential as far as the small signal behavior is concerned or in other words i can say that for this particular circuit the gate potential and the source potential their difference is always the same so in the small signal equivalent circuit what i can do is i can connect these two terminals together because a battery in a composite circuit is equivalent to short circuit in the small signal model as we have discussed already in the last lecture so we have simply a short circuit between this gate and source like this so ultimately what we have v1 is equal to 0 over here because gate and source they are connected by means of battery so essentially it's a two terminal device drain and source being the two terminals just like this and if i would like to find out the resistance provided by this particular circuit or by particular device then what i can do is i have to connect some external voltage source like this between these two terminal because these are the two terminals available to us drain and source i need to connect some external voltage source like this let it be vx and let me calculate the current which will flow in this direction ix and then the resistance now uh, if i place uh, if i place a boundary over here and if i want to observe the resistance provided by this so this is nothing but so the resistance provided by this particular mos so r of m2 what i can write r of m2 is nothing but the ratio of vx upon ix that will be the resistance provided by this particular device now as v1 is equal to 0 because gate and source they are at the same ac potential so gm v1 that is also 0 that means uh, this current source is also absent then what we have from the simple ohms law what you can write it down is vx is nothing but r0 times ix so therefore vx upon ix is given by r0 okay so ultimately this mos m2 can be realized by means of the resistance r0 so once again uh, if i want to uh, visualize the same circuit this uh, amplifier circuit involving these two mos device then what we have ultimately is so i think it will be better if i go to the next slide because in that case i'll get more place so let me draw the circuit once again so on the top you have p mos so this will be acting as a current source and you have okay let me just put the battery over here okay let me show you the small signal and the composite circuit side by side so that you can understand the difference so let me first draw the composite circuit so this is the composite circuit so let it be v2 this one is v1 this one is v in this is mos m1 this is mos m2 supply vdd and v out over here so this is the composite circuit so let me write it down over here composite circuit involving the dc as well as ac component 
this is the composite circuit and whatever the corresponding small signal so the corresponding small signal looks something like that and based on this we will be developing the small signal equivalent model so this is grounded this is also at ac ground as you know and these two terminal they are connected together gate and source of second mos that is m2 they are connected together in the small signal model and what we have we have this signal v in only because v1 is absent in the small signal equivalent circuit v in here and v out here so this is the small signal equivalent this is the small signal equivalent circuit small signal equivalent circuit equivalent circuit and uh, we will try to represent this mos by means of their equivalent model how can i do that so let me start from the beginning let me start from the mos m1 so you have two terminals like this this one is gate this one so let me mark like g1 that means the gate of the first mos s1 that means the source of the first mos between these two you have certain voltage and then what you have okay let me write it down like vgs1 and this is the drain of the first mos m1 so between these two what you have it's nothing but gm1 times vgs1 this one is the drain terminal d1 and obviously you will be having some resistance r0 between the drain and source of the first mos which i can mark by r01 then the drain terminal of the first mos m1 is also connected to the drain terminal of the second mos and what you can do is this entire thing this entire mos m2 can be simply presented by means of a resistance and that resistance is nothing but ro already in the last slide we have seen that whenever we are using the mos m2 as a current source not an ideal but a practical current source then it behaves like a two terminal device and its appearance in the circuit is nothing but that of a resistance whose value is equal to r not so between drain to source what i can do is i can simply put a resistance now this is the drain terminal of the second mos and the source terminal of the second mos is connected to the ac ground so this s1 and s2 they are connected together i can think like that because s1 is at ac ground and s2 is at vdd which is also equal to ac ground so therefore s1 and s2 they are connected together and ultimately between these two so this is also d2 d1 and d2 they are also connected together quite apparent d2 between d2 and s2 we have the resistance ro2 so this is s1 or s2 same thing and this one is ro2 and this voltage is equal to your v out how to place v in so v in is here between g1 and s1 it's connected like that so this one is equal to your v in okay so now it is very easy to find out uh, the expression for the voltage gain uh, we can find uh, that uh, you have an equivalent resistance of r1 parallel r2 over here so what about the v out so the value of v out is nothing but so the value of v out is nothing but minus gm vgs1 into the equivalent resistance which is nothing but r1 parallel r2 and it is also apparent from the input side that vgs1 is equal to v in 
So V out is given by minus GM times V in times RO1 parallel RO2. So the expression of the voltage in AV is given by which is nothing but V out upon V in that is given by minus so what about that GM so that GM is nothing but GM1 GM of the first MOS which is working as an amplifying device so GM1 times RO1 parallel RO2 so as far as the gain I mean if I just consider the magnitude of this particular amplifying device is concerned this is nothing but GM1 times RO1 parallel RO2. So RO1 is for N MOS and RO2 is for P MOS. And the typical value for this RO1 and RO2 they are large with respect to the resistance RD. So what we can have ultimately the value of this particular voltage gain is typically large with respect to what we have studied in our first exercise just by implementing a simple resistance connected between PDT and this particular drain terminal. And obviously there will be a phase difference between the input and output because that is the property of the common source stage. If I uh, have an input signal like this, if I have an input signal like this over here, if the input goes like this, then in the output side it will be amplified and at the same time there will be a phase reversal and that is quite apparent uh, from the expression because we have minus sign here outside. Now this uh, RO1 and RO2 these are the properties of uh, the MOS device and uh, as you know this RO1 and RO2 they are also function of the bias current DC bias current. So GM1 is also function of the bias current. So based on this uh, you can ultimately uh, find out the expression of the voltage gain. So uh, that particular construction that we have uh, mentioned over here that means uh, the current source is used as a load for a MOS amplifier for a common stage common source stage MOS amplifier. Now it is known as this particular configuration is known as let me write it down the name of this particular configuration this is known as common source stage common source stage with current source load common source stage that is quite obvious because we are applying input at the gate and we are collecting the output at the drain with source as the reference terminal so it's a common source no doubt about that and what about the load it's a current source load so common source stage with current source load okay so mm, with this, uh, uh, I would like to uh, end this particular lecture because our time is uh, almost over. Uh, so let me stop it over here.